Or here, good. Oh, it's not true, but it seems that way. Oh, you don't have your glasses on. Thank you. <laughs> I only need them for close up. I wore the purple carry button all the way here. They didn't fall off. Two seats here. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. My 
name is Kat. I'll be your tour guide today here at the Titan Mission Museum. Um, Silo, we're going to tour the 5717 Silo of the 571st Squadron of the 390th Strategic Missile Wing. Before we get started, though, we're going to watch a quick five minute video. It's going to tell you a little bit about the missiles that we have out there. It's going to tell you about the Cold War and about the part that the missile played in the whole idea of pieces and parts. So, we're going to get started with that video. Once that's done, we'll head on out. Welcome to the Titan Missile Museum. You're about to tour Complex 571-7. This site was operational from 1963 to 1982 and was one of 18 silos here in the Tucson area. Before going on the tour, we're going to watch a brief video explaining the Cold War and the part that the Titan II intercontinental ballistic missile played in it. The Cold War developed in the late 1940s after World War II, when distrust rose between the United States and the Soviet Union. These former allies were now in a geopolitical fight for global influence. A key part of the Cold War was an arms race between the world's two superpowers. The focal point of the battle for military superiority was nuclear weapons and the means to deliver them. Both sides developed what became known as a nuclear triad which is an integrated system of delivering these destructive payloads by air, sea, and land. This meant strategic bombers in the air, submarine launch ballistic missiles from the sea, and land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles known as ICBMs. The Titan II ICBM that you will see here was part of a second generation of liquid-propelled missiles. The Titan II carried the W-53, a nine megaton thermonuclear warhead, equaling nine million tons of TNT. For comparison, in World War II, the Allies dropped 3.4 million tons of bombs. Each W-53 had nearly three times that equivalent. These weapons are city busters, doomsday devices with world-ending destructive capability. There were 54 Titan II missile sites assigned to three active strategic missile wings. There was the 308th wing near Little Rock, Arkansas, the 381st wing near Wichita, Kansas, and the 390th Strategic Missile Wing here in Southern Arizona. Each wing was made up of 18 silos. A wing was composed of two squadrons, each equipped with nine missile silos. Assigned to the 390th were the 570th and 571st Strategic Missile Squadrons. This silo was assigned to the 571st Squadron. Each silo was in operation 24 hours a day, 365 days a year by a crew of four, two officers and two enlisted personnel. Crews were assigned to their silos for 24-hour shifts called alerts. The Titan II missiles sitting in their hardened protected silos with their ability to launch in less than a minute were a credible threat of a retaliatory or second strike against a preempted nuclear attack. This meant that an aggressor could not expect that a first strike would destroy all the opponent's nuclear strike capability. The aggressor would in return be devastated in a second strike. This is known as mutually assured destruction. If one side launches, then the other will respond, at least as forcefully, ensuring that both countries will be annihilated. This concept was also expressed as peace through deterrence. The theory is that since neither side could win a nuclear war, that neither side would start one. In 1982, the Air Force started deactivating the Titan II missile system as newer ICBM systems came online. 